up. I guess I have to be here. Navisens from Sydney. Yes, Clayton, you get to be a judge now. You won, and you get to be a judge, right. as is tradition. Yeah. Oh, no, they're biggest consistent now. All right, so I, I just arrived at the launch festival, and I'm looking for my friend Jeff. I know he's here somewhere, but in this huge crowd, I just can't find him. So the first thing I do is I send him a text, and he tells me something like, he's at the 14th row towards the left, but hang on, does it mean my left or his left? But he's sitting behind someone wearing a red hat. Jeff, that doesn't really help me. So what options do I have? Well, I can run an app like Apple's Find Friends. But the problem with these type of applications is that they just don't have the resolution and the accuracy for me to know where Jeff is within this building, let alone if he's even on the same floor as me. So the years 2013 were in Silicon Valley at the launch festival Surely, there must be some type of technology here which can help me locate Jeff. Well, today, I'm going to give you a glimpse of the very near future. Jeff, why don't you come on out? Now, as Jeff walks down the stairs, you can see that we can monitor his motion and position with very fine granularity in 3D in real time without having any sensors placed within the building. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's amazing. So how are we doing this? Well, Jeff is wearing a device which we designed to locate firefighters. But this device uses only motion sensors, the same motion sensors that are placed in every smartphone on the market today including the one that's most probably right in front of you now. But the problem with most of these motion sensors is that the quality is so low that they're only useful for a few trivial things. They can tell you whether your device is in portrait or landscape mode, but that's really about it. What Navisense has done is we've developed... <laughs> Take a seat, Jeff. Oops. So what Navisense has done is we've developed technology which um, we've made a quantum leap in motion sensing technology. Our pattern pending technology, which we call motion DNA, processes motion sensor data to provide us with a navigation solution. In real time, in three dimensions, without relying on anything like Wi-Fi or GPS. OK, so what does this mean, what does this mean to us? Well, this is what Uber looks like today. You're at LAX, and the driver just sees a blue dot. He has no idea which floor you're on or which terminal you're on. But this is what Uber can look like tomorrow. Using our technology, the driver can now see that you're at the third terminal at the Virgin America stand, outside door number seven, and at the arrivals level, not at the departures level. He's not circling around while you're still waiting to get your coffee, or even worse, maybe trying to find your luggage. And there's a few other examples which we can go through. So when you're out shopping indoors, and this is actual data collected in yellow, which you can see walking about three quarters of a mile indoors at the Miracle Mile uh, shopping mall in Vegas. And here, not only can you locate yourself with fine resolution, but a store can even lead you to where an item is on the shelf, inside. And of course, you can also track where your friends and family members are, what floor they're on, and while you're out shopping, you can meet somewhere for a coffee without getting lost. And you can even keep an eye on your kids while you're busy checking things out. And let's not forget the original design, which was to locate firefighters in 3D inside buildings to make sure they're safe during emergencies. There are a whole bunch of applications which we can now pull through locating indoors. And we can now perform web-style analytics about human behavior, indoor location, so that we can now target services much better 
towards mobile devices. We're extremely excited about all the opportunities and the applications and the corresponding business cases of these, and we're looking forward towards making every mobile device location aware. Thank you. Thoughts from our judges? So, Cal, it's very cool. What, how, you're not using Wi-Fi or GPS, it's just the motion centers. That's so correct. There's how are you getting... Initial start point. The, the, yeah, I mean, where's the relative values you're getting to sort of... Okay, so the location is relative to an initial position. Okay. So, so what we've done is we had an initial position here and it's all relative towards there. Um, so in an example, say at the launch festival, that initial position may be when you sign up and get your card. Mm. And then people can know where you are. But there's a lot of people trying to solve indoor location with a lot of different solutions. This one's, uh, this is really interesting. You said that device he's wearing is a, it's not a, like an iPhone or a regular. No, so the device he's wearing, which I can pull up now. So this is, the original task was to de design a device made for first responders like firefighters. Okay. So this is a ruggedized device, which is waterproof and smash proof. But all that's inside is motion sensors, that's it and similar to the ones inside your mobile phone. Are similar, are they good <coughs> enough? I mean, could, can you use, have you proved that you can use the ones that are in an av average smartphone? Well, these are about two years older than what's on the market right now. And the key is, is the algorithms, so when you have a, a good sensor, it still performs badly. So to perform on a MEMS sensor, which is low cost, the algorithms already have to prove themselves enough to say that, you know what, there's such a disparity between high quality sensors and low quality sensors, that we expect that to translate to, to a whole range of sensors. And how do you set the start point? If you come out of an airplane, for example, how, you know, we get a GPS signal, how do we know exactly where we are? How, wh how do you think you do that? Well, there's a few scenarios. So, so the first one might be when you go in a building and GPS disappears, that would initialize. But I would see this as part, or, or the core part, or the core driver of an indoor location style system. So it may have some elements of, say, Wi-Fi and GPS, but this would provide the core Got driver it. of that. I guess the question I have is, 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 do you require venues to load their venue maps in? It seems like you'd have to have some kind of venue map load, right? Well, this will actually work without a map. Okay. I only put that map just for clarity. So we're actually not even using the map for the location. It was just overlaid on it. So of course, it makes it much more easier to, to, to visualize where you are with a map. But everything here is, is translated in real coordinates. Mm -hmm. So if you have a map that's well, you know, in, in meters or feet, then it will just plot directly on that. Real coordinates relative to an initial position which you must specify. That's right, yes. That's, so that, but it is, it is real coordinates though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. So the IP really is, is, is from a given uh, point in space, the ability to track motion away from a given point in space. That's the real core IP you have. Yes, that's right. So the core IP is really overcoming the problems with low cost sure. sensors. Um, and, and that's a really big sticking point. Hmm. So so ultimately, are, are you a technology vendor to the mobile phone uh, manufacturers? I mean, what, is that the end game here? Well, you, you can consider us as a technology company and ideally would run either as a service at the OS or even deeper, say, embedded with every motion sensor or every processor, which then can use, say, a, a set of different motion sensors to provide a location output. And so, to be clear, are you then selling them software, or is there a hardware component you're selling them as well? No, software. So, so the hardware okay. component which we have here is... You're already in the phones. You're, you're yes, just, yes, that's right. Basically, you'd be selling them a better algorithm to go in the OS to enable this type of mapping. That's right. We're going to enable indoor location from their existing motion sensors. Is having the sensors on at all times drain battery? Well, although you have the sensors on at all times, you're avoiding the RF transmission because it's all done locally. So in a way, you're saving on having to ping all these Wi-Fi access points or to access cloud services, which costs a lot more in terms of battery life than just the, lo the, the, the sensors are very low power themselves. So where are you in six months? Like, where, where do you want to be? What's, what's the, end, you know, the beginning game for, for six months from now? The first step would probably be to have a proof of concept app running on the phone rather than, than a, a hardware device here. Yes. But then the next step would be to embed deep in the OS or, it's, or, or provide an API that any developer can then use. So at the launch app next year or, or, or whatever app it would be, the developer should be able to request a, an indoor location, a high resolution location, and know exactly what direction you're facing, uh, how far you walk, and everything like that. So what is it going to take to have that on my iPhone? What's the next, initial next step? 
Um, so I'm not familiar with the details of having an API running on their iPhone or my own API. I think Android's a lot simpler okay. uh, to get that running on there, but that, that would definitely be the next step. So first, it might be an app that just accesses, say, Google Maps. And once you go indoors, it continues plotting on the trajectory to show you you're inside the building and, and so on. So it starts with the a basic map. Yeah. So I guess yeah. this, this is where I keep getting stuck, I guess, and I apologize for this, but it, it seems as like your example of, the, of Uber getting me at LAX. I mean, the challenge that we have, again, is that initial location. If I get off my plane in LAX, you don't have enough resolution to actually pinpoint my location in the first place, so every step I take is going to be not, potentially not accurate. So how do, you, how do you overcome that problem? Have you ever thought about that? Well, the heading is generally, the, the initial heading comes from a magnetic sensor, so that's not too bad. We know which direction you're sure, facing. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and there's actually some IP which I'm not demonstrating here, which is how we um, get a location using a map itself. Um, so that's one side of it. But ideally, it, running on a phone, it would, it would use some sense of the Wi-Fi uh, geolocation to get the rough location that you're at. And like, like, like you know, Wi-Fi Slam out of Stanford actually has done a lot of work to do indoor positioning with Wi-Fi. It seems like you could do a partnership or something with there where you could use them for indoor triangulation. And then I'm not sure I guess why yeah. you need you guys at that point, though. Well, yeah. so the big problem with RF signals, including Wi-Fi, um, is, I mean, this worked pretty well here, transmitting data at, you know, 130 hertz to the device for a nice visualization. But the problem is, is as soon as someone sets up a, a, a sign or a table, it interferes. And at an event like this, we have a lot of people. The human body absorbs 2.4 gigahertz very well. And what it means is all the calibration um, or the fingerprinting of Wi-Fi devices then gets thrown off. Um, and that's important in a crowding event. So at the networking event after, when everyone's standing around, you would expect all the fingerprinting to, to go completely off. Are, are you sampling um, the GPS signal after like maybe 30 or 40 seconds to see how, you know, if you're, if you're moving in the right direction as opposed to, you know, like, like being way off? So right now, or in this example, I'm not. But what we've really built is a probabilistic estimation sure. framework, and it takes in various information sources. And it can even use a map. But that's one of the things that, that we can use, basically, as, as various points along the line. Okay. Um, but in the most cases, um, we've gone tracking, for example, that, that Vegas data set we showed, or, or a whole bunch of outdoor data sets, too, completely without GPS. And it's been, you know, very well. I, I, one more question for me. Why did you invent this? I mean, like, what, what was the passion behind you and the thinking of this? OK, well. This is really technology that I developed during my PhD. So my topic was to enable indoor location mainly for healthcare and first responders. So it started off as a safety tool. So when a firefighter goes in a building, you know where they are. And if they're overcome by smoke um, or if they get trapped, they can call for help. So that's how the project started off. And this is the more, um, the more commercial outcome of that technology which I developed. Great. Awesome. Let's hear it for Navisense.